Like most roguelikes, Megabunk uses procedural generation to create random levels for every run. In today's video, I'm going to be recreating the procedural level generation of Megabunk in the Unity engine. For those of you who don't know, procedural generation means that instead of sitting down to assemble the level by hand, you simply give the puzzle pieces to an algorithm and define a set of rules, and the game generates a unique level every time you play. Let's begin by creating a block object, which we're going to use to assemble our map. I'm going to write a script to create a 20 by 20 map that's completely flat, just to check that everything's working fine, and it seems like we're all good. I'm going to import Unity's third-person character controller so that I can walk around the scene. Now we can begin working on creating some elevation changes in the terrain to make it more interesting. I'm going to create a function inside the block object which lifts it up by a certain number of units. Now if I lift up the center block by one unit, here's what we get. The problem is, if I lift it up by a larger amount, we end up with a gap below the block. So after I lift the block, I also need to spawn additional blocks below it to fill the empty space. Now I can elevate the block as much as I want and I won't get any gaps in the map. The next step is to come up with an algorithm which is going to go through all the blocks on the map and calculate each block's elevation. Now, when working with randomly generated terrain, my first thought is always to try using Perlin Noise. Perlin Noise is an algorithm used by many games to generate random terrain. It works by creating a height map, which is basically just a grid of numbers, where each number represents how high that part of the terrain should go. The algorithm ensures that the points which are near each other have similar values, which makes the terrain look more natural. For example, if we were to use pure randomness to generate a height map, the terrain would be all over the place and the game would be completely unplayable. But with algorithms like Pearl and Noise, the values are generated such that the resulting terrain is composed of natural looking hills and valleys. So at first I was going to use Pearl and Noise, but after playing around with it for a while, it just didn't seem like the right choice. The terrain was looking nice, but it didn't really look like Megabunk. After taking another look at Megabunk, I realized the terrain isn't really composed of hills. Instead, it almost feels like going through a maze, where instead of having walls between different pathways, the corridors are spawned on different elevations. Also, in Megabunk, the terrain is often generated with these very high cliffs, which is something that will be kind of tricky to achieve with Pearl and Noise. And if I crank up the values generated by Pearl and Noise, I still get mostly mountain-looking formations, which look kind of cool, but they're not really what I'm looking for. Besides, if I was to use these mountains, it would be nearly impossible to ensure that all the blocks on the map are accessible by the player. I'm going to be using slopes to allow the player to access blocks of higher elevation. But if the block we're trying to access is multiple units above the block we're standing on, a slope is not going to be enough to allow us to get there. I could achieve this by keeping uh, the hills relatively short, but I want to be able to have more variety in my terrain. So, if a cliff appears in my level, there needs to be some way of going up and down so that every block on the map can be reached. And this would be very tricky to implement if I was to use Pearl and Noise. So, instead, I decided to create a different algorithm which spawns blocks one by one, which is going to allow me to check the accessibility of each block. To begin with, let's keep elevation out of the picture for now and just make it possible to create a flat map with this algorithm. The way it works is we pick a random spot in the grid and we spawn a block there. Then we pick a random spot adjacent to this block and we spawn another one. We repeat this process until we reach a point where there are no more free spots around the spawn block. Then we go through all the blocks we spawned starting with the first one until we find a block which has at least one free spot around it. And we begin the same process again from there. We repeat all of this until all the spots are filled up and in the end, if we trace the path of the chains of blocks that we spawned, we end up with something that looks kind of like a maze. We can now apply this algorithm to our block spawning and we're going to end up with a flat map again, but this time the blocks have been spawned in chains. And now we can adjust the algorithm to introduce some changes in elevation. In the earlier example where I showed the Pearl and Noise height map, the height map is an image where each pixel represents one block and the brightness of the pixel represents the height of the block. 
We can apply the same logic to the algorithm and start with black squares which get brighter as the chain goes on and the elevation is increased. When generating the actual blocks, every time the elevation is raised, we spawn a slope block instead of the regular block. To ensure that every block on the map is accessible, we just need to make sure that every block in a given chain is no more than one block higher than the previous block in the chain. We don't care whether the player can walk from one chain to another, since we can always walk back to the beginning of the chain and access the other path from there. So we can have large cliffs between the chains and still be sure that the player can walk to any point on the map. When the algorithm is done, we get something that looks pretty much like a Megabunk level. I added this slider in the inspector called Hilliness, which controls how often the elevation is raised. Basically every time a block is spawned, we generate a random number, and if that number is smaller than the value on the slider, we raise the elevation. I divide the slider value by 2 because anything larger than 50% becomes too crazy for this kind of example. So if I keep it at 0, I get a completely flat map, and if I crank it up to 1, the map becomes one giant mountain, which looks pretty cool in my opinion. I could definitely see something like this being added to Megabunk as a new map. But for our example, we're going to keep the slider at 0.15, as that's the value I think looks the most like the Megabunk's forest level. Next I created a couple of pixel art textures for the block and the slope, and now I have that iconic Megabunk look to my terrain. I also drew some grass blades so that I can spawn some grass growing out of the block, which I randomized using a little script I wrote. To give the scene some atmosphere, I added some fog, similar to the one in Megabunk, and I made some pixelated particles which appear here and there throughout the level. To create the walls around the map, I just spawned 4 blocks and scaled them up to the dimensions of the level. Now the scene needed some decoration, and I wanted to begin by adding some trees. I downloaded this asset pack of low poly trees by Broken Vector, but the problem was, the way these models were UV mapped, uh, it was not possible to apply any texture to them. Instead they were made to just use colors, which I didn't really like for this example since everything in Megabunk uses pixelated textures. So what I had to do is import these models into Blender and UV unwrap them from scratch in order to create UV maps that can be used with textures. Now all I needed was a sprite which contains a foliage texture and a wood texture, and the trees were ready to be used. The way I implemented the trees was I just made it so that each block has a certain chance to spawn a tree on top of it, and just like that we now have a forest in our scene. And I wanted to add some stones around the map next, but I was too lazy to go looking for a low poly rocks package, so I just decided to disassemble some of the tree models and use the round parts as stones. Which in the end I realized was probably more work than finding some assets in the asset store, but that's okay. So I created another pixelated texture, this time grey, and just like that we now have rocks in the scene. One thing I found pretty cool with this kind of art style is that sometimes messy texturing actually makes the asset look more interesting. Like for example you can see on the stone assets where the mesh was cut for UV unwrapping, which is generally a bad thing, but on the stone asset it actually creates the illusion of shading which works out kinda cool. And with these trees and stones I feel like the map really comes to life. I also cut up some tree models to create some logs laying around the map. And even though in Megabunk there are many more objects scattered around the map, like walls, towers, shrines and so on, I think I'm gonna call it done here since I mainly wanted to recreate the actual terrain. But if you'd like to see more feel free to let me know in the comments and maybe I can make another video related to Megabunk or any other game. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.